Hey marketers, Brent Hamill here with a new video. In today's video, what I want to discuss with you and show you is how to get more out of your email blast campaigns for sales days such as Black Friday, Mother's Day, etc, etc. I'm going to show you how you can test things in really systematic form in order to get more from those sales. I'm going to show you how I've generated $1.4 million with a particular client using this exact strategy over a number of sales, not just one. 1.4 million is a pretty decent number to do in just one uh, kind of like email day. But this exact system we've used for a number of different sales over a number of different months to generate that $1.4 million in revenue. Along with that, I'm going to show you a couple of different sneaky little hacks and optimization tricks that some of the big players are using and also that I'm using in my email campaigns that are really, really simple, but punch up not only open rates, but click through rates and overall conversions for you to get more out of your email campaigns. So with all this being said, let's jump over to my computer and we'll get stuck into today's tutorial. So here we are at my computer. Now the best thing that you can do to get the most money out of your email campaigns and the most money out of your digital marketing campaigns is to smash that subscribe button and to smash that like button on this video. It really does help just a teeny tiny little bit within the YouTube algorithm and allows me to dedicate more time to making these videos because I would rather be making these videos than doing the work that I do day in day out. No disrespect to my clients, of course, I, uh, I love doing the work, but it's just a lot of fun interacting with the people uh, that see these videos and, 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 and whatnot. So with all that fun stuff being said, what I want to do is talk about this current slide and this is what I mentioned to you in the introduction that this little testing protocol that I run with clients that have decent email marketing lists has worked particularly well. With this little on the sales day testing sequence, you'll be able to guarantee that you'll get the very most out of the particular sale that you're doing. It doesn't matter if it's Black Friday, Mother's Day as I mentioned, a Christmas sale, anything like that, it, it not only guarantees, but it gives you peace of mind that you are doing the very best you can to generate the most money with your email. Because email is the closest thing that we have as marketers or as business owners or as an agencies, tons of agencies watch this channel reach out to me, is it's the closest thing that you have to pushing a button and generating revenue. It's fantastic. Email is the most underrated or one of the most unrelated assets in business today. And what I'm gonna do is jump straight over into the nitty gritty of what this strategy entails. So what I have here is a testing protocol on the day. Now, there's a lot of prefabbed work, which is which will be obvious, but what will happen on the day of the sale, or on the day of the first initial uh, email uh, opportunity to send people correspondence, is this is the, this, this is the step-by-step -step process I go through. Not every single time, but most of the time when it is applicable, when it is applicable, I definitely go through it. So first up, I'm trying to narrow down on what is the best subject line. Now, what I'm going to do is at 7 a.m. for the client, I'm going to send to just 10% of the email list. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test two different subject lines. Now, I'm not going to change any other variable because any other variable will not will will be like a, a multivariant test and will ruin the environment of the test and it will it will cause a validity threat. Now the subject line is at the front of the funnel, so therefore uh, the validity the, the opportunity of a validity threat is almost moot. But if you start testing body copy etc. at this point while you're testing a subject line, yes, you'll have a, vali a validity threat. Uh, the environment of the test is compromised and the results after the subject line are a little bit hawky balky and I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, you know pay too much credit to them. So this is the exact process and what I'm sending an email as I mentioned to 10% of the list. I, I test two different subject lines depending on how large a list is. If the list is hundreds of thousands, I'm testing more than two. But typically speaking in a handful of thousands to tens of thousands or in the low six figure range, I'm only testing two or in in the low six figure range I'm testing more than two but in the tens of thousands up to 100,000, I'm typically testing two to three. Over that, I can test a lot more because I've got more data to substantiate the numbers. So people that are actually into the right into the math of this stuff will maybe want to point out to shoot me down in the comments in terms of statistical significance. 
if you are one of those people, you know this, and you know you don't have to shoot me down for that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm trying to cater for the mass market here. So with that being said, what I'm looking at at this stage, testing the two to the, to the 10% of the list is open rates and making sure that there's no big difference between conversion rates between subject line A and subject line B. Uh, if there's any discrepancies, large discrepancies in conversion rate or uh, order value, I need to pay attention to that because one may have a 25% better open rate, but the other one has a 300% uh, higher conversion rate and an average, uh, higher, uh, a higher average transaction of value. Uh, these are warning signs. Open rate is not a commercial metric. Conversion rate and order value definitely is. So just one hour later, about 25% to 70%, depending upon the industry and the, the, the list that you have, the emails will be opened at that rate, at 25 to 75%, 70%, whatever it is. I know it's a broad range, but you know, you work with I work with so many different industries. You just it's somewhere in between there most of the time. So what I want to do here is use the best subject line from test uh, the first test, bring it into this one. Now I'm testing body copy. I'm testing two different uh, big changes of body copy. This is just a random image I pulled. I would not test this. I would be testing a radically different approach and, and theme that still fits in with both subject lines. So I'm essentially saying the same thing in a different way, uh, be it a different hook, a different theme, uh, a different emotion, etc. Plenty of different ways to test the body copy that still fits in with the subject line. Everything's gonna be congruent, remember. We can't have a subject line that's uh, affinity uh, and greed orientated, then the body copy moves into to fear and deadline and scarcity, uh, et cetera, et cetera, or, or lust for, for that matter. And there's a big disconnect that won't work uh, really well at all. So what I'm doing here is I'm testing body copy. Again, this goes for one hour. And what I'm testing, looking for here in terms of metrics is which one gets the best CTR from, uh, in terms of the clicks within the email. So at some level, if you watch my other videos, such as the, the video that I reference uh, and I talk about writing Google ads and how you can write better ads, I've got two videos on that, one on the theory of it and one on the practical examples where I break down and write better ads based upon examples I find around the internet. What we can do with that is, with the principle from that, I, this is the long-winded version of COVID, uh, trying to get one point across, is the, what, what, uh, what, the, what those Google ads are doing, they're trying to sell a click. You're not trying to sell the product in the Google ads. Email's a little bit the same. You can do a little bit more selling because you have more rapport, et cetera, et cetera. But don't forget, if you're sending people to a VSL, a webinar, um, a long, uh, a long, um, long page sales, uh, long, a long form sales page, so to speak. Uh, you want to, just getting people to that is one of the top priority. Doesn't mean you have to write short copy. Uh, it can be medium length or long length. Uh, you, you write what you have to write. So, but I, like, I don't like to just attest headlines here because typically people don't have the large enough email list to substantiate testing headlines uh, and then running another, like you know, let's say 3% of the list is at 10%, then testing leads, then testing body copy, then testing call to action, et cetera, et cetera. People typically don't have the email list large enough to test this. What I'm doing now is testing 10%, then I'm merging the good subject line with the best body copy, and then I'm moving into the next portion of this test. So obviously once I've narrowed down on the best subject line and the best body copy that won, I'm sending that to the 80% now. So that's all going out to the 80%. This will typically be around about 9 a.m. So what I'm doing now is I have what I th what the math says, don't shoot me down the, math the, the mathematicians again, what, what the, the math loosely suggests will be the best subject line and the best body copy, I will get a, a slightly better uptake. I might get a, 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 a better, I might, I might get upwards of 10 or 20% better open rate and I might get a, a 10 or 20% uh, better click-through rate. I might be able to achieve a better uh, average order value, so on and so forth. These have compounding effects and is really big for your business and your email marketing campaigns. So at around about 2 a.m., uh, sorry, 2 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon, what I'm doing now is uh, a good portion of people have opened the email but haven't converted. They've gone to the sales page, they've gone to the product page, they've gone to the service page, whatever you're running, they've gone to that page and they haven't completed the macro conversion that you want there, B 
be it whatever it is. Now, all those people that opened that didn't convert, now I'm sending them another email, giving them an added bonus or an added incentive or to reiterate the, to reiterate the deadline. Really, really important here. Uh, th there's another one, uh, fear of regret of not purchasing. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Again, you can emphasize that here. And a great example that I heard about, heard about the fear of regret of not purchasing or that I've seen, sorry, is uh, a gentleman that teaches accountants how to become a CPA, a chartered accountant, he follows people around with his retargeting in terms of uh, what, what he does is he shows them the, the hardest questions from previous CPA tests. And, and it's, if you're an accountant looking at getting your CPA, it's holy gee whiz, these are tough questions. I need this guy to help me. So that's like the fear of not purchasing. So that's another point that you can use at this stage at 2 at 2 p.m. to try and get even more purchases. So the people that have opened but haven't converted are at some level interested in the offer. How can we get them on board? This is the email to do it at the 2 p.m. mark. So it's 6 p.m. It's now 6 p.m. We've emailed the 10% of subject lines, the 10% of body copy, the 80% uh, or the, like the champion 80% has received, the people that opened now also that didn't convert have also received a follow-up email trying to get them over the line and to, you know, to generate money out of them. Uh, what we're trying to do now at 6 p.m. is to get all the people that didn't open or did open and didn't convert still. I know it sounds like a lot of emails and some people are gonna be saying like, this is gonna piss people off. Well, it is. and. Who cares? I suppose at some level, it's not that I'm trying to irritate people. Like that's not the right thing to do. It is the way that I look at it is, is people watch Netflix for six, seven hours a day. Like if you have people complaining about your emails, you're writing shit emails. Like you're being lazy around your emails. That that's like I know I'm putting it pretty black and white, but you're writing shit emails. Like if the, if they are not worthwhile to the audience that are on your list. Your audience jumped onto your list because they, at some level, they are interested in what you are selling. Be it whether you're an agency writing these, whether you're a business owner writing these, etc., etc., etc. I've said that, I said etc. a couple of times there, a bit too much. But you get the point. If your emails are causing problems, you're writing crappy emails. Write better emails. Stop being so damn lazy and plan this out, not on the day or the day before. Plan this out three weeks before, so you can write a crappy email and then edit it. The gold is from polishing. It's polishing that rock. Now, you write the shitty email, then it becomes a better email. You might even completely rewrite it. I, this is the process I take. I actually handwrite them out, then I drag and dictate them out so I can hear it. And then I leave it, and then I come back, and then I edit it, and then I send to the client, they review it, they make their critiques, and then it's finished. It sounds a lot easier when you say it like that than it actually is, but it's a pretty easy process. And it gets amazing results as you see. Now just looping back to this 6 p.m. email to all the people who haven't converted, it's a closing promo, closing promo, no testing, just sell the damn thing. Like literally just sell the damn thing. Everyone's getting a, a, a final ditch effort here. And I, I, I can't stress enough that be, pre, be bold, be direct, and uh, make sure it fits in with the brand. I work with a couple of people where brand consideration is particularly important and you do not want to be like the sham wow guy trying to you know, force something down people that is a little bit tacky. But depending upon what your brand is, your persona is, or what your clients is, sell the damn thing. Be clear, be direct, uh, have extreme clarity around what you're saying and it'll work particularly well. So here's some email hacks that some people uh, are using, such as Agora. Uh, down the bottom of this slide, we see Sabri Subi at King Kong. I only got this email, to, uh, I think it was like three days ago. Ironically, I prepared these slides about a week ago, and then <laughs> wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, Sabri Subi sends me uh, one of the images that uh, I was going to, I actually wasn't gonna use it, I was only gonna have a bullet point, but I thought, heck, he sent me this. So he sent me an email here and 25 new clients for Bren. And um, it's just his personalized image. And there's a couple of services that do this and they are nifty images and pick snippets. They can do this and you can personalize your emails, have you holding up a card. There's plenty of different ways to skin this cat and you can have a, a fair bit of fun doing it. 
So thank you to Sabri Subra at King Kong, who's a digital marketing agency for providing such a fantastic image for me to, to steal there. Uh, use a Facebook image. This is a really cool one that things that people like Agora, who if you've never heard of Agora, shame on you. Uh, well, I don't mean shame on you, but like get onto their email list. Like look up Agora, look at their subsidiaries. It, they do some of the best money. They sell information. Like there's no physical representation of what they sell. They sell information. It's very, very difficult. It's very lucrative. They have some of the best marketing minds working there. I think they do well over $500 million a year selling information. These guys know the ins and outs of marketing. And these guys, that they will put Facebook images. So I wanted to use a couple of clients ones. I've got a couple of clients, Facebook ads, that have several thousand shares. They've got several thousand comments, etc. They're great social proof. I don't play Warcraft, and if anyone does, I don't know what this ad, uh, what this post means. But what you can do is you can post an ad or a post, uh, or paste it into your email at the top, and that has social proof. Like so, there's a lot of likes, shares, etc., comments, whatnot on this post. I don't know what it means in terms of uh, impressive influence, reputation, bonus is live. I, I don't know, but you get the idea of what I'm trying to say here, and that. This will re, uh, improve rapport, uh, improve social proof. People are familiar with the Facebook format, etc. So a nice little uh, you know nifty hack there that is really like double uh, like t touching things once, but getting you know two two goes at it, so to speak. So you create the Facebook post, but you're getting two opportunities with it. You're using it on Facebook, and you get used on your email. So you know two birds, one stone there. Another one or another couple, sorry, is using gifts. Uh, they work wonderfully well. They can be used in terms of if you're sending people to a video to watch the VSL or a webinar, uh, what you can do there is you can have like a countdown timer just like this example. You can have like a video overlay of, uh, so having it animated, so getting people to click the image that represents a video so they go to the page so they can watch the video, substantially improves click-through rates. Obviously that leads to more conversions Everyone's happy with a fatter wallet. So, you know, enough said there. Don't forget to use curiosity. Don't forget to use fear of regret. So very much like the accountant, you know, what's going, how poor is your life going to be? Or how, is your life going to be worse off if you do not buy this, right? So this fear of missing out on a, on a, uh, on a discount, you can use a discount as well. I'm not, I'm not saying you can't, but fear of regret of not purchase is also a big thing. Use deadlines. <laughs> People like, I think they hate deadlines, but they damn work. Like, I've tried things with deadlines. Clients say like, hey, I don't want to use a deadline. It seems tacky and stuff. I'm like, they earn more money. They're like, yeah, but can I say, can I just send 20% of the traffic that comes to a page that has a countdown timer? We'll send the majority to the page without the timer and we'll just see who wins and you know, you can make a decision. And I've seen it like over 20% more sales due to the countdown timer. Not always over 20%, but I have seen it well over 20%. You go back and you're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, stick the damn countdown time on top. Of course you're going to, like 20% for no expenditure. Like, it's crazy. So, especially if you're running big numbers, like uh, uh, even just a high single digit increase or a low single digit increase can be massive. Countdowns, uh, countdown timers work. Use lots of uh, testimonials and case studies within your emails, etc. cetera. Uh, use them with, with outside of your email. Like, uh, I do some consulting on and off, bit of mentoring with a uh, with a real estate gentleman, and he's got these boxes. Uh, like, uh, it's weird now. I'm trying to tell a story to, to to a video camera, but this guy has boxes of paper, like the reams of boxes. Like you get the 500 chunks of paper, and you, you get like the four or five in the box. He's got those boxes filled with testimonials, and when he goes and meets a new prospects for a listing, he goes, "I know it's hard for you to gauge whether." It, uh, an agent is good or you know worth what they say etc but what I've got here is thousands of testimonials from all the people that I've interacted with over the last 30 years and I'm going to leave these with you and he's got boxes on his light in, in his office it's hilarious he, he, he sends me a couple of photos every now and again of, of when the uh, when the printer sends them back through who knows what the damn printer thinks but uh, anyway I, I've digressed a little bit there but use tons of t case, study, case studies and testimonials they work wonderfully well so that wraps up today's video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, smash that like button because then you get reminders that I've dropped a new video that will help you make money. I'm not trying to sell you anything, of course. Don't forget to smash that like button. It does help me in the YouTube algorithm and if 
for anything it costs you a millisecond to do and I would be forever grateful. Don't forget, like all my videos, if you want to reach out to me and just have a marketing chat, it could be for 10 minutes, it could be for 90 minutes, it doesn't bother me, I enjoy them all. There's no selling in it, it's just literally talking about your business, your campaigns, what's the good, what's the bad, how can we improve things or how can you improve things, uh, so on and so forth. Some people do want to talk about me working with them, uh, that's fine, but that's always instigated by the other person. There's plenty of people on my Facebook page that have reached out and, and, and hit me up and we've had some great conversations. I really do enjoy them. I have around about three to eight. Uh, if you're watching this video during the coronavirus, I'm only having about three or four a week now at the height of before the coronavirus. I was having near damn 10 a week and I loved all 10 of them, to be fair, each week. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Get to reach out to different people. Uh, I'm waffling on about this because I do enjoy it a fair bit just talking to people all over the world and stuff like that. So if you want to do that, whip down onto my website, brandhamill.com, link in the description, smash this big button here. Uh, it'll take you to this form, fill out the form. Please enter in your time zone and the city correctly. Sometimes there's two, like there's a couple of different time zones in the one state and there's some people want to tell me like, hey, I live in, you know, whatever time and there's like eight different states in that, in that time zone. It's like, uh, you know, what city are you in kind of thing. Um, yeah, well, that doesn't really make much sense, but you get the idea. The time zone is important, uh, but some people tell me um, the state. That's what I'm trying to get to. Haven't fi finished this video off very professionally, but you get the idea. If you want to have a chat, reach out. We'll have, we'll have a good time having a, having a talk for 10 minutes or 90 minutes, whatever you want to talk about. With that said, smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.